In the 1990s, the city of Middletown demolished Long River Village, its oldest and longest running public housing complex. This is what it looks like now. All the people that grew up in this area, we have a, a annual event every year to have like a dance called Old Friends Day for all the memories of people who grew up in LRV. You'd be surprised all the people you still see. More than 120 families had to relocate. Some could go to public housing, but many had to find homes for the city's private rental market with assistance from the Section 8 voucher program. Down here, so we used to walk down here through the woods to go down to the river. If you go far enough back into Middletown's history, you'll realize this isn't the first time that large sections of the community have had their lives uprooted. In fact, this has happened to the same community over and over again. Spot was right over there in the corner. Give it to me in the corner, I'll bang them all out. You want last name? Uh, yeah, sure. And we're just going to get a little closer on that. Yeah. That's Ada Boyd. That's Willie Hunter. My name is Elizabeth Humphrey, and I've been in Middletown all my life. So, you know, it's 90 years. We are the biggest family in Middletown, I think. Yeah. So this is the Hunter family from Newfield Street. <laughs> it was my grandmother, my great aunt Mary and Martha Smith, my brother, Willie Hunter and family lived on Center Street. Like so many other American cities, Middletown embarked on a program of urban renewal or redevelopment during the 1940s and 50s that sought to revitalize the downtown area through the construction of highways, parking lots, and new commercial areas. Spearheading this movement was Wesleyan government professor Stephen Kemp Bailey, elected mayor in 1952, and organic chemistry professor G. Albert Hill, the state highway commissioner and later redevelopment agency director. Redevelopment first began in Middletown with the construction of Atchison Drive, or Route 9, in 1950. The new highway went through the low-income and predominantly African-American residential areas in the south end of Middletown, forcing several families to relocate. Reverend William Davidge, the pastor of the Cross Street AME Zion Church during that time, recalled that many members of his congregation lived on William South and Sumner Street and were forced to relocate but had nowhere to go. While some stayed in the church basement temporarily, the city responded to the crisis by building an emergency tent city. Right in back of the army was a, a field the kids used to go to and play baseball. That's where they set up all the tents for the people to live in. And it was coming wintertime. Now who's going to live in a tent? We had a dumb mayor in Middletown then, I can't remember his name, but all the boys waited one night and they got knives and went up there and cut those tents up. Yes, they did. Cut up every one of them. With Atchison Drive completed, Middletown's downtown was now put on display for outside commuters. In 1957, the city sought to continue urban renewal by clearing tenements in the downtown area through the Center Street project. Sitting in his office overlooking Center Street, Mayor Bailey later described the tenements as a daily depressant, writing, I knew that the concentration of our urban pathology was within the four block area that I could see from my office window. I knew that slums were cancerous. By March of 1961, 36 African-American families lost their homes and were unable to find housing within Middletown. 
Local landlords refused to rent to them despite the attempts of city officials and community activists to persuade them otherwise. Among those displaced were Elizabeth's brother, Willie Hunter, and her sister-in-law, Lillian Hunter. Speaking with the Middletown Press on June 28, 1961, Lillian said, It frightens me to see the buildings coming down because it means we have to move, and there's no place to move to. By August of 1961, the Hunters had finally found housing, moving them from the city center to the periphery of Middletown. Through urban renewal, the city of Middletown destroyed housing for communities in the south end of Main Street and in the Center Street area in order to build parking lots and a highway system that cut off access to the riverfront. When residents were able to find housing, it was in the periphery of the city. My grandmother moved from Center Street to Long River Village. Affordable housing in, in, in Middletown, as is in much across the country, really was something that was uh, promoted as a result of the activity of the Second World War. In Middletown, that began with a site called Long River Village. That site was originally built in the 1940s, and it was temporary war housing uh, constructed for the people who were working at a uh, very secret site in Middletown called Cannell at the time. And the purpose of that site was to develop a nuclear uh, jet aircraft that could fly around the world and not have to be refueled. Of course, that was not a successful endeavor. And ultimately, after the war, that temporary uh, war housing became permanent affordable housing in Middletown and really was the start of affordable housing in, in, in Middletown. It was there for doctors and lawyers. But after the doctors and lawyers got, got on their feet, and bought homes like up on Old Mill Road and different places. Then they opened the Long River Village for public. And I moved out there in the village in 1953. As a matter of fact, where I found my mother's grave, all the people that live around her were um, right next to us. One, three, five, the outlaw family, Vereens. Hello, my name is Ricky Vereen. So I believe in you know, it takes a whole village to raise a, to raise a nation, you know, and that's how it was. Growing up in a village, the Banks family, the Frazier family, you know, and you see, you know, and back then it was white and black that lived all in the neighborhood. And I see some of my white Caucasian brothers and sisters. I call them my brothers from another mother or my sisters from another mother. Hey, remember them days in the village? It was fun. You learned how to be... A total person. You learn how to fight. <laughs> you learn how to get beat up. <laughs> it was a good place to live because it was like to say, take a village to raise a child. Everybody looked out for everybody's children. You didn't have to lock your door. You didn't have to shut your windows if you went downtown. Everybody looked out for everybody. In fact, uh, at the funeral yesterday, there was a lot of people, young people, grew up in the village because Floyd, my nephew, grew up there too and they were given reflections on the things they used to do in the village, you know. And uh, so uh, Kenny Graham got up and he said, the village is in the house today, and it was. But they're all grown men now, you know. I was just shocked when I used to come down, when they first closed, I used to come down here locked. And, you know, I never really took photos because I was kind of in here, but since they put in all these trees. It was just nice to know that this is where we all once lived and this is where I, my whole maturation of who I am today started right here. You know, it just shaped me up to be the man I am today. Freezing hands and all. Oh, they stopped screening tenants. They're just letting everybody in for the money and that's when it started going downhill. So they kind of forced their own hand more or less to closing it down because it was becoming an eyesore, you know? Started getting people getting shot. They never had that gun. What was a gun? 
cap gun? Yeah, we might have had those in the day, you know. These are people coming from Hartford, let's go to the village. You know, they would come and park. Yo, man, get off my corner. They didn't even live here. I grew up and raised here. I can walk in here anytime I want. You know, and it got, got to that point where it just, when they decided to close, it was kind of for the better because it wasn't safe anymore for our elder. Oh, my, my mom was one of the elder ones out here and it wasn't, it wasn't safe for them. You know, and people would always be first and the 15th when they got their monies, they'd always get robbed, you know. So sad, but it needed to come to a halt because destruction was, it was going to be more destructive than it was going to be productive. Well, it was a very difficult t situation because we were very enthusiastic. Um, when a HUD secretary comes to your, uh, your, your town and visits your housing authority, it's uh, really considered to be an exceptional honor, especially a small housing authority uh, as we have in Middletown. And we were very hopeful and, quite honestly, there were various promises made that uh, funds would be provided for reconstruction uh, of affordable housing on that site. Ultimately, it was not successful. It was, of course, a great disappointment to the Housing Authority administrative staff and the residents of the Housing Authority that looked uh, forward to uh, going back to the site because they felt very, very close and very, very attached to the history of the area and they wanted to go back and return to, to a new public housing, uh, affordable housing facility. It just never uh, was funded. and there has been uh, no activity on that site today. It remains a very bucolic uh, land um, that has a wonderful view of the river and we have no current uh, plans for that uh, particular site as of today. From all the, all of, all the family that, that grew up here, you see like there's a few, I saw someone the other day, they say, hey, LRV. That's what we used to call it, LRV, Long River Village. Our motto was, I'm, I'm from the Ville, never ran, never will. <laughs> that was our old motto. This made you strong, man. It was, it was just good, good upbringing. You know, and it was nice to see, like I said, your mom, she was here, she could discipline me. You know, everybody looked out for one another, and that's what made it so beautiful. You know, so families got this place, yes, they got this place in more ways than just moving. You know, the, 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 the upbringing and the caring, you know who cared about you. You know, and if somebody was down and out, someone was always there to reach out and help them. Mm -hmm. It's made it a good thing, but those days are gone, so you gotta find other ways to still yeah. reach out and help, though. There's still other ways you can do it.